Hi, this is Paul. Yes. I'm just sitting here. Uh, it's about 8 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I didn't get any phone calls. <laughs> and I, work, I, I woke up on the emergency bed and I didn't really want to sleep there. I, I had sent some emails yesterday about my rights being violated. <laughs> I wanted to sleep in a hotel in a bed instead of on a bed, <laughs> but you didn't think that was important. <laughs> you know, I looked through the children in the middle class yesterday. <clears throat> uh, looks like a lot of court systems, they require those that are getting divorced <laughs> to take this class, and you can do it online now. <laughs> In fact, I, I looked at the, the money that I spent to take the class for the dissolution of marriage. <laughs> and it seems that they have some requirements of law for those that want to get divorced. Um, where there's certain requirements where both parties, both the petitioner and the respondent, <laughs> need to consider what's in the best interest of the children. Now, I know my wife took that class on the 26th of June of 2012, and then she filed for default dissolution of marriage. <laughs> I'm not really that happy today, to tell you the truth. I wanted to bathe, and you didn't want me to, and I'm considering that um, you don't understand. I'm not very happy today. <laughs> Now, it's going to rain today at some point, and uh, I don't have my heavy winter coat because <laughs> I was vandalized, burglarized, and somebody threw all my shit away. <laughs> and I'm kind of concerned because I'm going to have to get another coat, and I, I thought I should have some money, but you decided that you were not actually going to consider what couples should be doing after they've taken that state required class <laughs> filing for a motion for default dissolution of marriage <laughs> you know I was reading the Kitsap County Court rules yesterday and it seems that it's 90 days from the date of serving the respondent yes <laughs> but then there's that proof of service that the sheriff uh, gives to the court after they've arrested somebody now, I got quite a few of those court forms yesterday. I spent some time in the library. <laughs> we're going to go through them this morning, and we're going to ask ourselves. <laughs> proof of service. Let me see. <laughs> Is that proof of service at the time of the arrest uh, where you arrested me for the allegation of violating the protection order? <laughs> you know, I noticed somebody decided to change some court forms. Yes, <laughs> On just a normal protection order, it says 14 days or until the court hearing, <laughs> but an extreme protection order! Now, as I understand it, there's five variations of the protection order, and then you decided to enter enter a sixth, uh, sixth <laughs> uh, variation of the protection order. The extreme protection order that makes it abundantly clear that you only get 14 days. <laughs> now, I know you're there in the police or sheriff's department, <laughs> anywhere in the state of Washington, poach, and somebody decided to give them 14 days until the next court hearing for just a normal protection order. <laughs> yes! <laughs> But uh, for the extreme protection order, they make it absolutely understood. You don't get more than 14 fucking days. <laughs>